Hey gang, welcome to another edition of Up the Middle. Today we're going to finish off our discussion on Kushner versus Biden. This is part three in our final analysis. As you know by now, Hunter has pled guilty to some tax issues. We're going to talk about that in better specifics. We're also going to talk about and summarize again what Kushner had been up to, especially during the final months of the Trump administration. Uh, today, we've started with this time Google Bard in lieu of chat GPT, the artificial intelligence that many creators like me are now using to give themselves a base in doing some more immediate and quick research. As always, I've read through everything and have made some edits. Those edits are cited in the show notes or comments, depending on how and where you follow us up the middle. For those of you who are have been following progress of yergs.com, that has gone live as of this recording. There may be some tweaks and edits along the way, but as always, you can now follow us on yergs.com. And more importantly, we're going to replace Linktree with the website. So any social media that you prefer to follow us on, the link to that will be available again at yergs, Y-E-R-G-Z dot com. Let's get started. So with Kushner versus Biden, again, this is part three, our final analysis. Here's a quick summary of everything with regards to Hunter. On January 20th of 2023, Hunter Biden, the son of President Joe Biden, agreed to a plea deal with federal prosecutors in Delaware. The deal calls for Biden to plead guilty for two misdemeanor counts of failing to pay taxes and to enter a pretrial diversion agreement on a felony charge of possessing a firearm while being under use of controlled substances. What is that? So two misdemeanors on failing to pay taxes, not a big deal. The felony, how did that come about? Well, let's talk about something else that came about because of a felony admission. Michael Cohen, a former attorney to Donald Trump, pled guilty to lying to Congress and uh, being part of the Stormy Daniels deal. What did that get us, us as a society, not us as Democrats or those trying to hang somebody? But as a law enforcement community, that got an admission of guilt against Donald Trump because what he pled to, he could not have pled to had Trump not been involved. He pled to lying to Congress on X number of, of uh, attempts to do so. He also admitted to being the one that paid off Stormy Daniels. He does not have that money. So where did it come from? So by his own testimony and admission, it came from Donald Trump. Therefore, implicating Trump, Trump would now have to be guilty as well, or we can't find Michael Cohen guilty also. It's the same thing happening here. Hunter Biden is guilty of a weapons charge. Why? He's a drug addict. We've known he's a drug addict. And while he was still in addiction, he admitted that, one of the very important steps of conquering addic addiction. However, he owned a firearm. Until that point, legally. So now it's a felony charge. Because he's admitted to having a firearm by the very paperwork that registers it, and is in counseling already and rehab and so on to conquer the addiction. Under the terms of the plea deal, Biden will be sentenced to two years of probation and will be required to pay a $100,000 fine. He will also be required to undergo drug testing and counseling, something he's already wanting to do. If he complies with all the terms of the agreement, the felony charge will be dismissed. Gang, this happens all the time. This is not a sweetheart deal. This is normal. The plea deal comes after a five-year investigation of the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Delaware. The investigation was launched in 2018, 
during the Trump administration, after reports surfaced that Biden had failed to pay taxes on millions of dollars of income. Like he's the only millionaire that doesn't pay taxes on their fair share. For example, Elon Musk just recently admitted that back in the early teens, he paid $11 million in taxes. And that was awesome because, wow, he's paying, I don't even make close to $11 million in taxes. He must be paying his fair share. It's 3% of his income. Not even close. Moving on. Biden's lawyers have said that he entered the plea deal to avoid, quote, the burden and uncertainty of a trial. They have also said that Biden is deeply sorry for his actions. Also a usual response. The plea deal has been met with mixed reactions. Some have criticized it as being too lenient, while others have said it is fair and a resolution to the case. Probably allow, write down party lines. The plea deal is likely to have limited impact on President Biden's political career. However, it could continue to be a source of controversy for the Biden family. Yeah, because Republicans aren't dropping it. Here's some of the takeaways from the plea deal. Hunter Biden has admitted to failing to pay taxes on millions of dollars of income. He has also admitted to possessing a firearm while being a user of a controlled substance. He has agreed to plead guilty to two misdemeanor charges and enter a pretrial diversion agreement on a felony charge. If he complies with the terms of the agreement, the felony charge will be dismissed. Plea deal is likely to have a limited impact on President Biden's political career. Here is something that the artificial intelligence missed that I did research on, and again, citations are provided. The U.S. Attorney for the Federal District of Delaware, David C. Weiss, is the same U.S. Attorney for that district appointed by President Trump. Due to this investigation, President Biden did not ask for the U.S. Attorney's resignation, as is customary in every district. Additionally, Weiss oversaw this investigation personally, something a U.S. Attorney would only do in a high-profile case. Rudy Giuliani and the Mafia, for example. This isn't often the situation when you consider the violations in this particular case. Maybe because he's somebody's son makes it more high profile. It's not until Republicans targeted Hunter for the fact that he is President Biden's son, not because of the infractions, that their own friends are also committing. On to Jared Kushner. Jared Kushner operated two private businesses while working for Trump between 2017 and 2020. One was called Cadre, a real estate investment platform that allows people to invest in properties together. Kushner was also a co-founder of Cadre and remained a major shareholder while he was in the White House. It's technology people invest in and start, you know, startups of whatever kind. I don't see that particularly having interfered with his job as an advisor as much as this next one, Affinity Partners, a private equity firm that invests in Israeli and American companies expanding in the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. Kushner founded Affinity Partners after he left the White House. Okay, let's look at that. Kushner's ownership of these businesses raised concerns about potential conflicts of interest. For example, Cadre was involved in a deal to buy a property in Manhattan that was also being considered by the Trump administration for a federal government office. Kushner recused himself from any involvement in the decision, but some critics argued that his ownership of Cadre still created a conflict of interest. All right, well, that kind of contradicts something I said earlier, doesn't it? Maybe Cadre is a bigger deal. Maybe we should look at that. Kushner's ownership of Affinity Partners also raised concerns as the firm was investing in companies that were doing business with the Trump administration. Now this is getting way more muddy than an international attorney doing international business as a private citizen. 
something Kushner was not. For example, Affinity Partners invested in a company that was building a solar plant in Saudi Arabia. The Trump administration had been promoting Saudi Arabia as a potential partner in the development of renewable energy. I mean, hello. What else do you need for a conflict of interest? Wait till we start talking money. In 2020, Kushner sold his stake in Cadre and transferred his ownership of Affinity Partners to a trust. Really? However, the concerns about potential conflicts of interest remain. Hello? I mean, let's review some of our early episodes on this matter when the intelligence community didn't even want to get him the security clearance because of shit like this. The only entity that has invested more than $1 billion in Jared Kushner is the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia. Well, I mean, seriously, do we need any more? The fund, which is controlled by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salam, invested $2 billion in Kushner's private equity firm, Affinity Partners, in 2020, while he was still working in the White House. But let's talk about whatever amount Hunter Biden is delinquent on. And Ron DeSantis' drag queens. The investment was controversial as it raised concerns about potential conflicts of interest. Potential? Kushner had served as a senior advisor to his father-in-law, former President Donald Trump, then President Donald Trump. And the Saudi government had been a close ally of the Trump administration. The Saudi government's been a close ally of the United States. So it really doesn't matter, the administration. Some critics argued that the investment was a reward for Kushner's loyalty to the Trump administration. We'll get, we'll get to that. Because that objection actually came from both sides. The Saudi government has defended the investment, saying that it is a sign of confidence in Kushner's business acumen. However... The investment has continued to be a source of controversy. In 2022, the House Oversight Committee launched an investigation into the deal, but closed it once Republicans won the House in that year's election. So, Democrats investigate it under Pelosi. They lose the House, and McCarthy shuts it down. Not down lines at all, is it? In the last few months of Trump's administration, Kushner took three trips to Saudi Arabia. In less than a six-month span, he's going there three times. I think that's worth a billion dollars. September and November of 2020 and January of 2021, all allegedly for the purposes of peace talks with Israel. But it was also at this time that the payment was made by the Saudis and received by Kushner. It is unclear whether the investment will ultimately be profitable for Kushner. However, the fact that the Saudi government was willing to invest such a large sum of money in his startup, by the way, it's not even an established company yet. This is a significant testament to his perceived value as a businessman. Or whatever else came down the pike. What is suspicious is that this business was done while he was on official business. I would be fired immediately if I did that as a Secret Service agent. And was done against the will, here's the part we talked about a moment ago, done against the will of the Saudi funds advisors. Unlike Hunter Biden, who was always a civilian during his business dealings, and has always been an international business attorney. He was always there doing his job. Whether it was with China, Ukraine, wherever, those are his clients. And he's not doing secrets on behalf of Vice President Daddy or now President Daddy. You can't be suspicious of one without condemning the other. Maybe... 
know, Hunter Biden is no angel. We know that, and I don't know any addict who is. He does have an illness. He has admitted that. He's been treated for that continuously and to this day. And no, it was not his cocaine at the White House. But if you're looking at him for a couple million dollars worth of unpaid taxes or taxes on a couple million dollars worth of income, even less of an infraction, you need to look at the conflict of interest created by Jared Kushner and, frankly, the Trump administration. I can't see, and this isn't me being a libtard. This is common sense, people. Like I've said before, some of these talking heads like me give you what you want. Daddy gives you what you need. And here are cold, hard facts. This guy took $2 billion from somebody he's also doing government business with. That's not okay. And Kevin McCarthy letting this go is worse. There's the information. Check the notes that I've created in addition to the script that was provided by artificial intelligence. Check the notes that I've provided, the citations, uh, information on David Weiss, uh, information from the Citizens for Ethics, and any other citations in either the show notes or the comments, however you listen or watch. Until next time, you've been up the middle. Think for yourself, people. Don't be one of these. I love that thing. Yeah, we're now with Riverside, by the way. Thank you, Riverside. We're uh, going to work out the other. All right, let the sheep go. There we go. We're now with Riverside, by the way. Um, we just, for technical reasons, needed to leave StreamYard. We want to thank everybody at StreamYard for the past year and getting up the middle and the doggy traders on the Internet. However, we're now going to be moving forward with StreamYard. That's why there's not as many cute uh, visuals today. We're still learning that. Look forward to that in the next couple of episodes. Meanwhile, check out yergs.com, Y-E-R-G-Z.com for the brand new website. See you again.